Hey folks, welcome. Here we discuss real stories by real people. Today we have the story of a man who finds out his wife has been cheating on him since the start of their relationship. Let's see how it goes. Story 1. Three years ago, I found love in a slightly younger woman, 48 female, whom I later married. She had good genes and didn't look a day above 40. For this reason, most people thought we married each other for selfish reasons, but it was love. We were living our best lives. We both had a grown-up child and an active love life. What else could we ask for? Although my son hated her guts, he was married and only came around during holidays and so it was easy to dismiss his worry. She had a promiscuous past. I had met her while she was living wildly, but she had long since changed and now lived responsibly. My son insisted it was an act. I suggested we go on a dual vacation to Maldives, him and his wife along with me and mine. Hopefully, it would help everyone bond together. He grudgingly accepted. We made the necessary arrangements. Everyone was looking forward to it, but at the last minute, she bailed out. Her daughter had been booked for an emergency CS and she needed to travel to London to be with her. When I called my son to inform him about the new update, he exploded with anger. He visited the next morning and told me he wanted to show me something. He brought out his phone and showed me his conversation with my wife's daughter. He said he had smelt a rat and reached out to her on Facebook to ask about her mother and was told that her mother wasn't there with her. She wasn't even due to deliver until next month. I called my wife and when she picked up her location and when I did, what punched me in the guts was her lies. She cried that she missed me so much and couldn't wait for her daughter to give birth so she could return home. I even asked her where she was and she told me she was with her daughter in the ward. She kept up with the lie for three days and then she called me to say her daughter had delivered and she would return the next week. She returned. I asked her how the baby was and she gushed about his beauty and how happy she was to become a grandmother. Struggling to remain calm, I told her about the chat with her daughter and she was shocked. Her reaction convinced me to proceed with the lie I had prepared. I told her I knew where she was and she got angry. Shockingly, she admonished me for acting like I thought she wouldn't cheat. It was then I realized she had been doing this forever. She told me she got tired of having the same man in her bed and has been seeing another guy to scratch her itch. We had a loud quarrel. She insisted she hadn't done anything wrong. She said she's a modern woman and this is the modern way. I left the house angrily and when I returned, she was gone. She left a note on the fridge saying she quit. To this day, I do not know where she spent her week or with who, or even how many men she was with. Nor do I know whether she had been unfaithful before or if this was the first time, but it doesn't matter. The next time, we met to have her sign the divorce papers. She told me that she was glad we were divorcing because she wasn't cut out for marriage. In her words verbatim, she said, I like having different dicks. I'm currently trying to stop blaming myself for not seeing her for who she was. I should have listened to my son. He keeps telling me to go easy on myself as love tends to cloud people's reasoning as it had done to me. I'm healing and rebuilding the somewhat fragile bond I have with my son. Update. I woke up tonight to another voicemail from her. This time she wasn't screaming at me to stop trying to make her daughter hate her because of the divorce. She was begging me to help her make her daughter accept her. Her daughter had given birth but wouldn't let her into her house or anywhere close to the baby because she, my 2 be ex-wife, could be a bad influence on her child, especially as the child is a girl. Four divorces, numerous boyfriends and flings, and still working at a crazy club. Oh, did I tell you she's resumed her old job? Her track record is terrible. Doesn't look like a good image for a grandmother. Telling her I had no hand in her daughter's decision for the umpteenth time would be useless. Instead, I quietly hung up and blocked her line. Just can't wait for this to be over. I'm sorry this happened to your marriage, OP. Your son was right. You shouldn't be too hard on yourself for not seeing what your son saw in your ex-wife. Love blinds our judgment and helps us see the best in our loved ones. It's a good thing that she knows she's not meant for marriage. Some people aren't meant for commitment and your ex happens to be one of those people. Definitely cut off all contact with her. 
I hope you'll be able to put all of this behind you and heal. Story 2 I've been reading posts on here over the last week. D-Day was last Saturday. Since then, I've been digging for answers, trying to make sense of this all. My wife, 38, and I, 40, met in our early 20s. We dated off and on and were friends, lovers, and boyfriend-girlfriend. Eventually, we married. We have a teenage girl, 14, and a young boy, 8. The thing is, she's always had my heart. I think I knew early on that I loved her and wanted to be with her for the rest of my life. We shared everything. We talked about the goofiest things until we laughed to tears. We've always had the same sense of music together and attended many shows. We simply enjoyed each other's company. When our kids came into our lives, I had never been happier. We truly created some remarkable little beings. They are so damn adorable with hearts bigger than I could have ever dreamed. We've raised them well so far. If I'm most proud of anything as a couple, it's that we raise two selfless children who deeply care for one another and the world around them. I'm madly in love with these two. Our marriage has had its ups and downs, that's for sure. Obviously, over these many years, things can't always be amazing. That's just marriage. When we're at our highs, we're so on it. We effing cruise. God damn it, we were like Maverick and Goose. We owned life. When we were down, before this affair, we always managed to talk, to find common ground, to bounce back and cruise again. We fought for each other. I suppose this is why this hurts so much. Instead of fighting for each other, she chose him. There was this guy she met, his name is Chris, 30 male. They were once co-workers. She left that job and went to another but for some reason maintained contact with him over the last year. See, when they initially met, she mentioned this co-worker. He was always just kind of mentioned offhand in passing. Oh, Chris did this today, yada. I remember feeling something wasn't quite right, or maybe I was just being jealous. I couldn't put my finger on it, but looking back, it was a sign if there ever was one. I certainly left her on her own for many days without any social interaction. They talked heavily during this time. I still don't know why I did that. I can't help but wonder if on a subconscious level I had rejected her because at this point, she had already rejected me for him. Sometime around July, he would start asking personal questions about her relationship with me. Things like, how does he treat you? This is all she's given me in regards to that. I suspect the conversations went deeper than this one question, but she's been giving me little bits of truth here and there and a whole ton of, I don't know, or I don't remember. So who knows? June, July, she started meeting him on her lunch breaks. It's around this time they had their first kiss. According to her, she told him, this would ruin our families. To which he responded, I think I'm okay with that. I think of everything I learned, this exchange of words hit me the hardest. July and August. They met more frequently on her lunch breaks. They would meet in parks, in parking lots, at her work, at his work, at his house. They messed around in his wife's bed, taking their clothes off and making each other come. According to her, they tried to have sex one time in their bed, but he couldn't get it up. This detail is something that according to her was a regular occurrence and a detail of importance for later. They had sex in their cars in these parking lots. During this time, I was deep into depression. I would often vent to her about how off I felt. I remember sitting in the shower just staring at the walls, wondering if life would be easier for her and the kids if I was just dead. I never considered killing myself, but certainly thought it would be easier if I was gone. October to mid-October. They meet in parking lots more frequently and book a hotel room with each other. They spend an entire day together after pretending to get ready for work that day. After she leaves the room to head home, she texts me, Phew, what a rough day. Holy F this day hurts. That text just gutted me. At the time, I responded the way a husband would, supporting his wife after a tough day at work. Reading back on that day now, as I do trying to find signs I missed, just effing sucks. I was home with our kids, working, while helping them do distance learning. A stress that is not fun. Juggling a kid's education while trying to remain accountable with work. A couple times in the cars, she mentioned, he couldn't get it up. They had also told each other they loved one another. I had suspected something was up. Everything was off. So early in the morning before my workout, I snooped. 
I felt guilty snooping at first, but I found the affair. I found a long text history with huge gaping gaps in discussion that was a massive flag. So I opened her Snapchat and noticed they had a very long snap streak. Something I tried so many times to get going with her. Makes sense now as to why we never had that streak. Here's where I found saved pics of him telling her he missed her. Her telling him, I can't wait to kiss that face, mister, etc. Nauseating stuff to find, really. I saw red. So I confronted her. I woke her up. It was 4 a.m. I flipped the light on, gave her the phone, and asked her to explain. Her first words were that she was upset that I looked through her phone. Ooh, the effing nerve. She tells me that they kissed once. That was it. It's never just one kiss, is it? I think when I showed her her Google map history that she realized I knew more than she was letting on. She started filling me in on more details. How many times they had sex, as far as she's letting on, that he couldn't always get it up, that he wasn't good, just different, whatever the F that means. When I look through our phone data, I find that her average text per month went from 500 to 4,500. On the worst day, they had texted each other once every three minutes over 16 hours. When asked why she did it, at first she tells me that she was lonely and that she felt like I didn't value her. Now that reasoning has shifted to, I don't know, I was stupid, I got addicted and couldn't stop. To be clear, I am fine admitting that I was distant, but I have a very hard time taking blame for this. She could have talked to me at any point, raised her flag and told me we were slipping. And I would have fought with my last breath to make things right. She didn't do that though. She chose him. She fell into him. She dated him. She effed him. They told each other that they loved one another. Update. So I found out everything I needed to know at this point. But that doesn't stop the wondering, the need to dig and find details. I feel like a psychopath. I feel like I'm not myself. The day I sent everything to his wife and then confronted him. I sent it all. Everything. He lied about everything. He said my wife was making it all up because she was obsessed with him and wanted to break them up to be with him. This infuriated me. I wanted him to effing own his actions. I learned at that moment that this man doesn't offer anything more than I do. In fact, he offers much less. I could go into all the ways I know I'm better than this guy, but in the end, that would just be petty and sad. I actually feel sorry for this guy. In all my frustration and hatred, I feel bad for him. So where does that leave her? I don't know, she's made a lot of changes to start out. She removed social media, deactivated and deleted accounts. She blocked his number, suggested she'd be willing to get a flip phone instead if that would help. She's okay with me checking up on her, checking her phone and messages. She took my wedding ring and put it on a necklace that she wouldn't take off. I took the ring off during the D-Day fight and told her I no longer wanted it. I'm starting to feel like she is remorseful. But I think all of the trickle truths and gaslighting have pushed back on me accepting any of that remorse. However, who knows how sincere this all is? Is it because she's caught? Is it because she's scared to lose our family? Scared of embarrassment? Our oldest, at least, wouldn't forgive her for a long time, I know. She's old enough to understand. Our youngest may just be old enough to understand. Either way, they wouldn't like to hear what their mother did, why our family was broken up. As far as I'm concerned, she left me in the shower staring at a wall wondering if it would be easier to be dead. OP, I'm sorry for everything you're going through and your pain. Seek professional advice. Do not stop looking for help and support from family and friends. This will make a total difference. You have no reason to be ashamed. It's not your fault, no matter what you are told. There are several books that can help you. Online videos, a fair recovery. On the official website of Surviving Infidelity, there's an area called Healing Library, which will give you information on how to deal with everything that's happening. Pay attention to your wife's attitudes. Talk to a lawyer so that you are prepared for any situation.